Welcome back to another UFC fight prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the prelim fights for UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus, Maya versus Askren. So without further ado, let's get to our first fight on the card and our first prelim. So in our first fight, we have in the heavyweight division, Rafael Pezoa Nunez versus Jeff Hughes. So looking at this fight, I'm not at all impressed by Nunez. I think he has a pretty good size. He kind of have a slender frame. Like he's taller, but... Definitely not the widest frame, being kind of chunky in the middle. Weird looking build. And I think as far as what he bring, he doesn't really bring a solid ground game. He does have like a good uppercut and he does have some good power shots here and there. But it's not like he has cons a good consistent flow of striking. He might throw a good shot here. Like maybe a good, like I said, good uppercut. Might have a good flurry or two in him. But he's not really a good consistent striker. Not a really good ground game. He's really a amateurish fighter who needs a lot of more improvements. I think he actually has a lot of fights he still kind of fights very amateur, amateurish, like, despite having all these fights. But like I said, it's heavyweight. He has a couple good shots at, at a time, and that can take you far in the division. That only takes one shot. But I guess for a guy like Jeff Hughes, who he's facing up against, Jeff Hughes, like, another fighter who's not all that impressive. But he's good at pressuring. He might not have the most prettiest, te like, technique with his striking, but he at least understands distance, understands getting in and getting on these taller fighters, like making their shots short because a lot of these taller guys, once you get in on the inside, they don't really have no inside game. And the same with Pessoa Nunes. He might have an upcut from like that mid range, but once you get past that, what else does he have? So I feel like Jeff Hughes is going to be a, like, you know, fight a typical Jeff Hughes fight, get in, smother that range, wear him out, and then put him out. I think Jeff Hughes, like, striking level. As a matter of fact, Jeff Hughes is usually not the most technical striker going there, but in this fight, I would say Jeff Hughes is the more technical fighter, stri striker, fighter all around than Nunes. And I think he can, like I said, get in, get in past that range smother him and then put him out i think it's kind of like the first round like a filling out well not a filling out process but like you know a process of breaking him down process then i think he stops him in the second round so in this fight i got jeff hughes via second round tko now to our next fight we have in a women's strawweight division loma luca bone or bone me or whatever her name is versus alex alexandra albu so look at this fight i think um loma she only has about th with four fights she's three and one just like alexander albu is three and one Except Albu, I think she only had one fight outside of UFC. Then her other three fights were inside of UFC. Or she at least had two fights in the UFC. Like she's one and one or two and one. And I see like, Moma, I can't really see nothing for, from her because she's been fighting low tier competition because obviously she only has four fights. And she still lost a fight outside of UFC. I think she might have had a little bit of an amateur record. But I don't have to look into it too much because from what I'm saying from her, it's nothing that stand out about her that would say, oh, in her debut, go pick her because she did this or she does that. I think she's about an average entry-level opponent. And she's going against Alexander Albu. And a lot of these entry-level talents are people just entering the UFC, especially in the women's division, which is still, you know, developing. It's not as far ahead as the men's division are. A lot of these women, they, their technique might be all right. It might be this, but they can still open to get this manhandled by a stronger fighter, a bigger physical fighter, a little bit more experienced fighter. And Albu is all of that. She's a stronger, a strong powerhouse type fighter. She's going against a newbie, basically, even though they got the same amount of experience. Um, uh, Loma is new to UFC and Albu is not. She's not new to this level of competition. I feel like Albu can just go out there and, you know, fight her style of fight, be aggressive, be forceful, be strong, and, like, kind of go out there try to manhandle Loma. I don't think it'll be, like, a, a stoppage, but I think it's a pretty much a manhandle type of decision where Albu's going out there, pressuring, trying to take her down, trying to be on top, and trying to be the stronger woman in the, in the, like, in the cage. And I see her winning a decision. So in this fight... I got Alexandra Albu via decision. Now on to our next fight we have in the heavyweight division, Sergey Pavlovic versus Maurice Green. And this is a fight that on the card, period, like from top to bottom, it might be the hardest to judge because basically both these guys came in and didn't necessarily have the most impressive performance. I think um, Pavlov Pavlovic came in and got destroyed by Overeem. Maurice Green came in and rematched Jeff Hughes and barely beat him. It could have went to Jeff Hughes. It was a close fight, just like the first one was, except it didn't go five rounds. So Jeff Hughes didn't really get to break away. But basically, Maurice, or whatever cases, not the most impressive performance in their debuts, especially not on Pavlovic's side. Then in the next fight, they had impressive stoppages. Pavlovic stopped us, like Gome in the first round, impressively destroyed him. And Green stopped um, Pamperman. He destroyed him. Whereas Pavlovic for the grappler. And destroyed him on the feet. Maurice Green for the striker and destroyed him on the feet. So that's a little bit more press that Green for the striker and beat him on the feet. Also, Green has a kickboxing um, background and for that pretty high level. So that's on his side as well. 
the issue I have with Green is that, matter of fact, I would say Green is the better striker, and I think he'll be the better striker maybe through the first round for sure, and maybe most of that second round, or at least the first half of that second round. But I, I see what Green is. Is the fight goes on, despite all that technique, he starts to get sloppy, and um, through, despite technique and power, I mean technique, and I don't know his striking ability, he still starts to get sloppy as the fight goes on, or and like especially on the defensive side. I feel like Pavlovic is a more well-rounded fighter. And I feel like his technique stays more consistent. It's like not a lot of like a flash with Pavlovic's technique, but it's a technique that, you know, he can stay consistent. He has power. He knows where to put it. And he can constantly at least be defensively responsive and not make too many holes where it's green as the fight goes on. You start to pressure him. Those He becomes open to a lot of stuff. Head movement don't really be there. We kind of like his movement become predictable. His setups become predictable. I feel like Green will be dangerous early, and I feel like, let matter of fact, let me say this fight can go out of the way, but I feel like Green could be dangerous early, but I feel like if you get past that first round, or that first round and a half, I feel like Pavlovic can start to take it away. And I actually think it's going to be a real close fight, and I think it's going to go to the decision. I think but it's going to go based off Pavlovic's um, technique holding up more over the course of three rounds, whereas Green's technique and, technique and he becomes more predictable over the rounds. I'm going to favor Pavlovic in this, in this one. Like I said, out of the way, but I'm going with Pavlovic's ability to stay more consistent throughout the round. So in this fight, I got Sergey Pavlovic via decision. Now to our next fight we have in the featherweight division, Enrique Barzola versus Mazvar Evalev. So looking at this fight, you got Enrique Barzola, not the best striker, but he's certainly in trying to improve there. Solid wrestling. And what he is, is he's a pace fighter. He's a heart fighter. He's going to go out there. He's going to put a high pace on you. He's going to go out there trying to take, take you down. He's going to make you work. He's going to grind. He's going to embrace that grind. And that's what he does. Very impressive fighter. And the fighter you got to respect. That's a very hard style to keep. Not a lot of people could do it. And he does it very well. Now he's going against Mazvar Evelev. I think it's actually a bad style matchup for Barzola because Evelev comes from like that Sambo background. He comes from that Russian circuit. So he's dealt with a lot of people who's going to be high pace, high wrestling, in your face pressuring. And maybe those people aren't as good as Barzola, but at least he probably trained with these type of people all the time. It's nothing new to him. And I feel like on the feet, Barzola is trying to improve his technique on the feet, but still not as clean. I feel Evelev is a cleaner striker. And I feel like he's going to be used to a style that Barzola brings. I still think it's going to be a competitive fight. I feel like Evelev's experience with these type of fighters is going to suit him well. I think he'll be able to go out there and wrestle with Barzola, maybe shut his takedowns and, you know, wrestle him back and be the better wrestler in the fight or the better grappler in the fight. And they force Barzola to kind of become a striker in this one. And I feel on the feet, Evelev is the better striker. I don't think it's a stopper or not, but I think it's a very competitive fight. But I feel like it's a fight that Evelev should be able to win by being just better in the areas, or at least better at combating or defending against Barzola's strong areas, and then edging in his own area, like in the striking, in the tech, the physical tech. I mean, like the actual grappling technique. As far as pace, Barzola would have that, and grit, Barzola would have that, but technique in every area. I give that to Evelev, and I just feel like over the course of three rounds, that technique is going to favor over, you know, the heart and grit of Barzola. Maybe it was a five-round fight that heart and technique can break past technique, but in a three-round fight, I'm going to favor the technique. So with this fight, I got Mozvar Evelev via decision. Now to our cold prelim headliner we have in the lightweight division, Alex White versus Rafael Fiziev. So looking at this fight right here, Alex White, I'm going to kind of do this one very quick right here. I'm not going to go too much into it, but Alex White, I feel outside of UFC, before he got in the UFC, he was a solid grappler, striker, both of those. I feel like in the UFC, his grappler doesn't come out too much. He's more of a counter grappler, unless maybe you don't have no grappling at all, like Artem Lobov. But if you got any bit of grappling, he's not going to really go out and try to grapple you too much. He might go for a takedown, like average one or two takedown attempts the whole fight in the UFC, but he's not really going to be that guy to try to take you down unless you really don't got no grappling. I feel like Fizier's grappling is either just as good, I mean, either just a little bit less than what White's grappling is, or just about the same. Now, I feel on his feet, Alex White, he's kind of bulked up, and his, really his striking is like he's slower, and he's a power puncher. He's not, he, that's what he kind of became. He started doing more power lifting, and you can see he's physically sh- like buffer than he was when he first came to UFC. So he hits a lot harder now, but he's like kind of slowed down. So I feel like as you can strike with him, and, and you know, I feel like Fiziev is a more technical strike because all Alex White is looking for that one big shot or these one big shots or these power shots. I feel like Fiziev is better at picking his shots. Better at setting his shots up, whereas White is just looking for the knockout, in my opinion. So I feel like Fizius will be able to take advantage of White looking for those big shots, be the cleaner striker. And 
like I said, white, if you're grappling that, I mean, decent enough, White's not really going to try to take you down. And even if he does, I think Fizier can hold his own. So I really feel like Fizier is going to be the value White on the feet because White look, I mean, White's looking for one big shot or two big shots. Whereas Fizier is going to be looking for volume and looking for setups, spinning back, kicks, spinning this. He's going to be looking for different looks. Whereas White's going to be kind of predictable and slow. So I feel like in this one, Fizier is going to be able to beat him to the punch. Probably beat him to the, you know, to the shot if he needs it. Like really much be the faster, te- more tactical fighter. Whereas White's going to be the slower, less tactical fighter. I feel like the speed, the volume, and the technical side is going to be at a favorite fizzy of this one. So, but I feel it goes to a decision. I don't think he stops White. White's a tough dude, hard to finish. Especially you're not really no super phenomenal grappler or no super experienced fighter like that. You got to be real smart and real technical to beat White. I still see fizzy of just kind of green, especially coming off that loss in his debut. He's going to be a little bit more tentative, but I still think he'll be the faster, more technical fighter. And to be at a edge White on a decision, so... In this fight, I got Rafael Fiziev via decision. Now to our prelim headliner we have in the women's strawweight division, Randall Marcos versus Ashley Yoder. So this is a good fight right here. Or was it really good? It's a fight where two women kind of similar styles. Both okay strikers. Both want to wrestle and, you know, embrace the grind and grind you out, get on top, and, you know, ride to the decision. They're not really finishing type of fighters. Well, Marcos did kind of finish um. Angela Hill in the last fight, but technically, technically she's not a finish. Well, in the house, she, I'm, I'm going to say Yoda's more of a decision fighter. Marcos, I guess, high level competition t- t- tends to be a decision fighter, but she has some finishes. Like the overhand, she's able to hurt people at times, and she does have some, some submission ability. Not the most um, typical submission ability. It's very unorthodox, but yeah, she is a bit of a finisher at times. But I think, in my, my, my opinion, this fight probably going to go to decision be like a who can get the control, who can outscramble the other. I feel like Randa Marco's experience is going to help her in this one. I feel like her striking has been improving. I feel like she's going to be able to strike Yoda in this one. I think Yoda's a little bit longer, but I feel like Marco's a little bit... Matter of fact, I think Yoda is longer and bigger than Marco's, but I think I feel like Marco's the better wrestler, the better at in scrambles, and the better striker. Yoda will have size, and I think you... Well, I don't, really, I don't think Yoda's actually that young, but I'm kind of getting off point. But basically, I feel like Marco's more experienced and better in every area than Yoda. I feel like they're going to have a similar style, but I just feel like Marcos is going to do it better. And I see this one going to decision. So in this fight, I got Randa Marcos via decision. And that concludes my predictions for the prelims of UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus, Maya versus Askren. And as always, thanks for watching.